Yes, we're going to talk about DDE again. Now, if you don't know about DDE, they're daily derivative exotics. They're, they're auto YouTubers, so they're, they're car, car YouTubers. They rebuild cars and they drive exotic cars and, and everything like that. So they have recently been on a rally driving from – it was driving from Florida, Florida to Las Vegas, ending in Las Vegas for the F1. And we're going to be talking about F1 a little bit later as well. Um, now – I've been following this because I, I follow these guys. I enjoy it. It's a bit of it's a bit of escapism for me. Like when I'm just sitting down to eat lunch or whatever. If I'm not watching a podcast or whatever, I watch I watch one of their videos. And they've been doing this rally, and I've seen them do a lot of rallies and a lot of really really high class rallies. And it's really interesting that like every day, they did a good job in their vlogs of not talking about the bad stuff that was happening on the rally. They were just being themselves, enjoying the rally, enjoying their cars and being fun. Um, But you could kind of tell with the organisation of the place or of the events that they went to and everything like that on this rally that I'm like, this this actually looks really dodgy and looks like a really bad, really bad organisation. Well, they posted to their Instagram. They didn't do it to their YouTube channel, but they just posted this live video and that's it. They didn't say anything. They just kind of posted this and everything like that. So this was towards the end of the rally, I think it was, um, where um, the organizer of the rally was addressing everyone in the rally. Now, I'm not, I'm not going to... Um, I'm not going to play the audio or anything like that. We'll just, we'll just, and so you can, this is, this is, da, uh, this is uh, Damon from uh, DDE, um, yeah, filming the, the situation that was, that was going on. And, you know, the, the guy was addressing, let me just skim through to actually see him. Like, he's just, I'll give, give you the, the, the breakdown of, of what he's saying. He's out of screen most big pieces. They were trying to, not, trying to hide necessarily, but they just kind of didn't want it obvious that was phone was in the face. And because everyone was complaining about the organization of the rally and the quality of the places they were saying and everything like that. And this guy was getting, that's, don't know whether you can see that. He's just pretty much dressing them down. Um, oh yeah, that's, that's a good, oh, I won't bother turning on the captions, but thank you, Yash, anyway. He's just sitting, you know, waving his arms around, pretty much like talking to these people like they're all kids, right? And then gets gets to this situation where where he's he's addressing one of the members here and you can see this that there's a she's a female, um, one of the attendees of the rally, and he starts berating her and starts yelling and screaming in her face. And you can see that she just put her hand and she's like, just calm down, just calm down. She's trying to de-escalate the situation. And he's just this whole time just going it's my rally. I set the rules. It's my way. I'm not listening to you. And they're like, but we're your customers. You're like, no, you paid me for an experience. I'm giving you my experience. I don't care what you say. If you don't like it, you can leave and lose all your money and, and you won't get into the F1, which was their end, which was their end goal to get to and, and all this. And so you can see that she's just kind of just sitting back. She just crossed her arms to kind of, you know, show a little, a little bit of strength or whatever there. But you know, he's just going on by like, well, I'm this and I'm that, and I've done this and I've done that. And it was all ego. And then, you know, this guy's, this this woman's husband steps up and just goes, hey, don't get into my wife's face like that. And then then they start, you know, um, you know he gets up and defends his wife, which I think is kind of fair. Um, it didn't it didn't go anywhere, but I, I like, yeah, this was a conflict that was not handled right by the leader. This guy is the organizer of the event, should be the leader should be listening to his customers, but all he's doing is berating them, going on his ego of how good he is and what he does and everything like that, and just not listening at all. We spoke about communication before. This is really, really, really poor communication because communication is two ways. So, Dr. Rod, you obviously watched this video. What was your take on this situation? Well, I think you're right that uh, it wasn't really communication at all because it was basically one-way information and that was full of the F-bomb, which I don't think really helps diffuse any kind of tension at all. Uh And um, But the thought that ran through my mind was I doubt these people have got a very clearly specified contract 
Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> so they've thought they purchased a certain experience mm-hmm. and it hasn't turned out to be quite as they expected. And uh, the tension arises, I think, when there's a mismatch of expectations because this rally, what, what they're purchasing is actually what we economists call an experiential good. Uh-huh. It's not like buying toothpaste or, um, you know, a jar of peanut butter or anything like that. Um, you don't really quite know what you're getting until you're in the middle of the experience. And so there's always a degree of uncertainty. Mm-hmm. And for the entrepreneur, the great risk is a mismatch. A, a mic- <laughs> Let me try that Go one on, again. You can say it, Dr. A mismatch in expectations. Mm-hmm. And I think that might be what was going on here. But you're quite right, it wasn't very well handled at all. Mm. I don't think uh, Damien recognised that the source of the problem is likely to have been that expectations weren't being met Mm -hmm. and he didn't have the wisdom in that moment to say, well, let's talk about it and let's see that if we can work out what the issues are and whether or not there's something that we can do about it. Yeah. Now, actually, let's let's talk about that about your because there's there's a the definition of of disappointment is the difference between reality and expectations, right? That's that's where disappointment happens, right? Um, and I'm guilty of that. I'm the sort of person that does set very high expectations and do tend to get disappointed quite often. I over my years, I've learned to be able to manage that expectation. I still have. I still hope for the high expectations, but but make sure I manage the real expectations of like, well, this is what's really going to happen. But I, I I admit I get disappointed uh, sometimes. So there, there's actually a lot to unpack in this one. I think, first of all, as let's talk about business leadership, like let's talk about business leaders. You have some dissatisfied customers. Now, He's saying it's all the fault of the the customers because they you know they sign up to it or whatever. There's a couple of things here. First of all, we talk about expectations. Now I'm distracted. I know, and I'm sorry for anyone watching. I I'm distracted by my finger too. Maybe I'll just point with this. But even I'm distracted by this thing. So I'm sorry if my finger distracts you. Um, the the first thing is. He seems like I've seen other videos of of him throughout the rally, and he seems like uh, like what we'd kind of say he's a hype man, right? He's the type of person that just over talks everything, and that's just the type of person he is. He's, everything's exciting, everything's amazing, everything's everything's the best ever, and you could even tell it in this video when he's kind of talking about I've done this and I've done that and. All the things he's talking about is actually not all that impressive, but he's talking about it like it's really impressive. He kind of alludes to the fact that being with him is like being with the Queen Elizabeth II. Um, you know, like so so he obviously is one of these people that's just a hype man. And that's one big challenge we have as business leaders in is in the promotion of our products and services. Because we do have to talk up our products and services. We have to really promote them and, and and be excited about them. But that's that's the challenge. We it's very easy to over promote and over hype something in that moment if we're not experienced. Because this is, I think I'm pretty certain that this is the first this this particular rally, he says he's done others, but this particular rally is apparently meant to be the the it seems to be the first one. So I think that he got caught up with like, I can do all these things and I've got all these connections, I've got all this stuff, but he didn't actually deliver on it. So how do we as business owners, you as the business pastor, I know you're not, you you pray for businesses rather than giving strategic business advice and that's fine, but how would you advise a business person that, yes, they need to hype up their, you know, kind of like they need to, we need to be proud of what we do as business owners. We need to be proud of it. We need to promote it so that other people are attracted to it. But what's that fine line between being being proud of what we do and over-promising? Look, it, it is hard to do in the context of what amounts to an experience mm. because everybody's experience is going to be different. Yeah. And their experience is going to be highly conditioned by what they expect. Yes. So, look, if you really do kind of over-promise, 
you have to prepare for the fact that some people are going to be disappointed. And uh, I mean, I think you need to be very careful about hyping up an experience because it will raise people's expectations. And if their expectations are not met, then um, clearly they're going to be disappointed and some of them might voice their disappointment quite aggressively. Mm. Uh, look, they, the, these people paid 9000 that's 9000 US dollars for the experience. Yeah. Which if you almost, hype it up... Almost 15000 Australian. Roughly. But, mm. but look, if you hype it up and people are expecting a $90,000 experience, you're going you're gonna to have some people who are disappointed. Yeah. And I think that's, that's, that's the risk in over-promising. Now, it's especially bad, of course, in a leader if you know that you're over-promising. Mm -hmm. Well, if I mean, he, so the reality of this is, I, I'll, I'll give a couple of the examples. One was um, they went to a racetrack, part of, part of one of their stops was at a racetrack, and they were told they can race their cars. They got there, and then the organisers or the, the, you know, the management of the actual racetrack said, no, our insurance won't cover you running your own car. We've got like track experience cars that you can race and they're all like but we were told we could drive our own cars another one was like they rocked up to they're meant to be able to go to an airstrip to do some drag racing at an airstrip but what it ended up being is they end up being on a taxi runway that was literally uh, like of like almost this backyard airport and it was just the taxi it was just bitumen single lane probably a couple of hundred meters. Like it wasn't like, it wasn't actually all that it was probably more than, it was probably about, you know, you know, maybe 500 meters long or something like that. It wasn't, wasn't all that, that great, but it was that, that was, that was the example. And also apparently the hotels I was staying in weren't all that great and everything. So, um, so that, you know, that's the kind of level of overhype, and then the actual delivery that we're talking about. We're not just talking about, oh, they had bad expectations. No, they were told this is what to expect and they didn't actually get to live, get delivered that um, that thing. So I think that he, you know, obviously just the type of person that, I know this person and they'll let us do this and, you know, just kind of overlook the fine print, right? Like, oh, we can book out a track day and just just, just assumed that, that they could just do everything, right? So that's another message. Make sure you check the details. Make sure you check the details. But another part of this that I believe as a business leader he did poorly was listening to his customers. I think one of the biggest challenges business leaders is we – we can get a bit ego and think that we know best. And I hear business owners all the time. I've coached thousands of business owners over years. And the amount of times that I've heard a business owner say, customers are stupid. And they treat them like that way, right? Like it's, it's ridiculous how many they, they actually say that. And so when a customer comes to them with a complaint, their response is they're just stupid. So they don't listen. But the customers are the ones that are paying for things. So we need to listen to our customers. We have to listen to our customers and adjust our products and services to what our, what our customers say. Well, actually, there's two different ways you can do this. One, you can, when your customers are complaining, you can do one of two things. One is you can adjust your products and services to meet their expectations. That's a great, great you know, uh, adjustment. The second option you have is search out new customers that are looking for your particular product or service. If you believe that, no, I truly believe in the type of service or type of product that I offer, but the, the customers aren't appreciating it. Look, they're not stupid. They're just not your customers. Don't treat them like idiots. Don't disregard them. Don't talk down to them. Don't diminish them. They're just not the right customer for you. They're the right customer for someone else. They're not stupid. They're not bad, right? So you have two options if your customers are complaining. One is adjust your products or services to meet their expectations. Or two, find the right customers that would actually appreciate your thing, but don't disrespect the current customers you have. But in this, from a business coach, don't just drop all your customers and go for, for the other customers because your business won't have any income in the meantime. So use that time in a moment to just make sure that you... Um, 
can maybe maybe adjust, make a different package for those existing customers while you build up the customer base of your ideal service that you want to offer, and then you can slowly uh, transition across. That's just some some business advice. Dr. Ron, were there any other things that you saw? Actually, there was one other thing I wanted to ask you about. Obviously, like I showed you at the end, um, he got in the face of, of someone's wife, and that guy got up to defend his wife. Yes? No? Probably yes. Yeah. He wasn't overly aggressive. I think he said, no, hang on a minute. That's You're not going to treat my wife like that. And, and um, I think he probably did the right thing. Look, I, I find his use of the F word particularly offensive, to be perfectly frank. And look, I think leaders just need to avoid swearing. Uh huh. Just in yep. general, I think it's a good idea. Don't 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 do that. Yeah. Um, I did read somewhere that intelligent people swear, swear more than those who are less intelligent, and so that must make me pretty unintelligent. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I just think we need to find a better vocabulary. That's all. But well, I th I think on that point is is because I remember when Gary V first became really famous he swore so much and he was he just kind of like you know it was kind of his brand and 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 he kind of made all these excuses for it and everything and then everyone else started swearing and wearing hoodies and sneakers and and all that sort of stuff but i still stand by the fact of like swearing is lazy it goes back to that that communication thing we were talking about before is if you're swearing there's so many other, like, like for example, and I go back to this example all the time. I grew up listening to rap music. When I became saved, I stopped listening to rap music because the word, like every second word is a swear word and I'm just like, it just doesn't suit me. And then I came across Christian rap and I'm like, this is actually more creative. They have a harder job to come up with because most rappers just use swear words just as filler words, right? They just they just throw them in to fill in the beat, right? But if you don't use swear words, you have to find a, the right word to articulate the message and to fit with it. Yeah, so I think that that's in communication as well. We same as what we we're talking about before with the violence is we tend to resort to violence because we don't know the words to say. We tend to resort to swearing because we don't know the words to say. But we as leaders, we have to be com good communicators and find the right way to be able to communicate. Find the right way to use, don't use swear words. I think I think it diminishes you. If you use swear words as a leader, I feel like it diminishes you. It diminishes your value, diminishes your brand. It just puts out a bad, bad representation of who you are because you are better than that. You are better than that. We as leaders are meant to be disciplined right? That's why we're leaders, because we've been more disciplined than others and be able to build things. Yes, we've got gifts and callings as well, but we as leaders need to be more disciplined, and that comes in our language as well. And so not using not using swear words shows discipline and holds ourselves to a higher standard and shows people that we hold ourselves to a high standard. If I do that in my communication, I also do that in my work, Right? And so that it just represents, it's a physical, I know it's not physical, it's an auditory representation of, of, of who we are in our discipline as well. But also, it's just poor communication. If you don't know another word to use and you're using a swear word, well, increase your vocabulary. Increase your vocabulary so you can articulate what you're talking about properly. Now, Dr. Rod, sorry, I kind of cut you off because I thought that was a really good point you were continuing on about something else about that. No, the only other thing I was really going to say is it does convey a sense of aggression. Mm -hmm. And I don't think that helps in a situation like this at all. You don't want to come across as, as being aggressive and, and, and self-defensive when the issue most likely arises because of a mismatch of expectations. Well, yeah, and, and you say like aggression and people confuse aggression with strength well if if i've got to if i've got to appear strong i've got to be aggressive you don't have to be you know you don't actually have to. and actually you know, we mentioned the beatitudes earlier I, I i teach this in okay we've gone this far and almost almost an hour into our podcast and first first uh free first plug of our free leadership development program check it out link below i teach about this about meekness 
right? The one of the Beatitudes is blessed are the meek because they inherit the earth. And people think that being meek is being weak. Well, actually, it's not. Being meek, the actual definition of that is being resilient, being able to handle opposition and keep going. That's what strength is. Strength isn't being aggressive, isn't being the one that that rips his shirt off and punches someone or what. Like, that's not strength. Strength is being able to stand up in the in the face of conflict and control your emotions, control your anger, and so uh, and and control the situation. And sometimes that means taking an L, right? Like taking a loss. Like sometimes as leaders, we need to just back down from a situation. I mentioned my son earlier. Uh, one of the best lessons I learned when I first became a parent was, and everyone has said this before I was a parent, I'm like, no, no, I don't agree with it. But after a parent, choose your battles. Choose your battles. There's sometimes my son will do something and I'll be like, <laughs> yeah, I'm not, I'm choosing my battle this time. And I'm not, I'm not fighting that fight today. <laughs> and um, sometimes that means that that strength, right? That I believe that that's also strength as well. Hey, you just watched an excerpt from the On The Cube Leadership Podcast. If you like that, hit the like button and put a comment below. Hey, if you want to watch more videos like this, check out our channel. And while you're there, make sure you subscribe.